Simon Sinek's start with why was groundbreaking in 2009. However, based on recent business and scientific discoveries, we now know that we must start with who. We also know that building trust is the golden key to success. Over 90% of customers buy on trust. And Deloitte says high trust drives 400% more business performance. However, only 3% of customers trust vendors and only 20% of workers trust employers. How do we bridge this huge gap? In this TEDx talk, we'll explore how to use neuroscience, storytelling, an ancient Greek secret, and believe it or not, cheddar cheese to ensure customers, candidates, and colleagues trust us almost as much as they trust their dog. I'm Bill Reed, the New York Times best-selling author of several award-winning business and leadership books. I'm also a former Navy diver and the co-founder of several technology companies, including an Inc. 5000 consulting firm with blue chip clients. Years ago, while working with a $7 billion client to redesign their sales enablement and training programs, I discovered something shocking. I learned that you can't trust an acupuncturist because they'll stab you in the back every chance they get. Okay, all kidding aside, what I did learn is that low trust is the number one business problem that's costing global firms almost $9 trillion per year. In fact, the Gallup 2023 State of the Workplace study found that almost 80% of workers don't trust employers and are therefore disengaged. In contrast, the Deloitte study found that if we can increase trust in the workplace, we not only increase business performance, but we can also increase productivity by almost 80% and customer loyalty by almost 90%. But what is trust? And how can we improve it? One of my business partners has a PhD in neuroscience. He forced me to get a neuroscience certification from Harvard University just so I could understand him. It didn't help much in that regard, but it did open my eyes to something astounding. Trust is directly related to a brain chemical we all have. It's called oxytocin. If it's high, we trust. If not, we don't. It's produced in our limbic system, and there are numerous ways we can increase it. One of these involves sex, by the way, but since this is a business talk, we'll focus on three of the 10 primary ways we can increase oxytocin in professional settings. First, we must understand how our brains are wired. The late Dr. Paul D. McLean, a famous neuroscientist, discovered the triune brain theory that says we have three brains and not just one. Now, some people may only have half a brain, but I digress. Our three brains include the neocortex, which is more logical and prefers text and numbers. The limbic system, which is more emotional and prefers visual elements. And the reptilian complex, which is more instinctual and also prefers visual elements such as videos and pictures. Now, we might think this is strictly a modern understanding, but the concept was actually brought to light thousands of years ago by an ancient Greek guy who wore fancy bed sheets and threw wild toga parties. Any idea who that might be? If you guessed Leonardo DiCaprio, you are incorrect and will be publicly humiliated on Facebook. Okay, the right answer is Aristotle. He invented the persuasion model to help speakers engage with and persuade audiences. He created a triangle with three corners labeled pathos, ethos, and logos. When we examine these, we find they relate quite well to the triune brain theory. As Mr. Spock might say, that's fascinating. 
but how can we use this knowledge to build trust and therefore sell, market, recruit, and lead more effectively? Let's examine three ways we can increase oxytocin to increase trust. We'll start with storytelling. I had a conversation with Dr. Paul Zak, a renowned neuroscientist. He conducted clinical studies and found that proper storytelling can increase the stress hormone cortisol. This improves attention and retention. By resolving the story in the right way, oxytocin can also be stimulated. But how do we tell a proper story? Well, I've been fortunate to team with number one New York Times bestselling author James Rollins to teach several classes on storytelling. Most authors use the three-act play or a similar story structure. Let's see how this relates to modern neuroscience. Think of the story, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. In Act One, which is about 25% of our story, we see Dorothy in her ordinary and gray world. She's unfulfilled, but not actively seeking to leave. She's thrust into Act Two, which is about 50% of our story. There, she meets a mentor, Wizard of Oz, friends, Tin Man, and an evil witch in the world of Oz. She must overcome obstacles and defeat the witch to leave Oz in Act 3, the final 25% of our story. She returns to Kansas with the knowledge that there's no place like home. What's happening in our brains during this story? In Act 1, the storyteller builds dopamine, a chemical that helps us sympathize with the protagonist. We also build oxytocin so we can trust our mentor and colleagues. In Act 2, the storyteller builds cortisol and norepinephrine to increase stress, which improves our attention and retention. Finally, in Act 3, the storyteller builds serotonin and GABA to calm us down and deliver a logical conclusion. Colors, vocal tone, pacing, and word choice can all make a profound difference in each act. For example, in Act 2, more active verbs, faster pacing, red colors can help increase tension and therefore cortisol. What's a second way we can increase oxytocin? With challenge stress, we can combine storytelling with a team contest, such as a fundraising drive, and use friendly competition to stimulate cortisol and oxytocin. This is not only fun, but it can also help improve team building and collaboration. A third and interesting way to increase oxytocin and therefore trust is with our interesting X factor, cheese. You heard me correctly. There are certain types of cheese, such as a great manchego aged cheddar or Parmesan that contain tyrosine crystals. Tyrosine is one of the nine amino acids found in oxytocin. So if you're not happy with your break room snacks and you want to increase trust in the workplace, offer cheese platters. They'll help drive 400% more business performance. Do you recall the triune brain theory we just learned? Hopefully you do. Here is a question for you. What part of your brain is responsible for only 10% of your decision making? If you answered emotional or instinctual, you are incorrect and have failed the exam. Sorry. The answer is your logical brain. We smell the new car leather and logic goes out the door. Why is this important? Around 75% of a good story is emotional and instinctual and not logical. Also, in presentations, since our logical brain prefers text, what should we use? As few words as possible and more visual elements. One last thought. I'm passionate about helping my fellow veterans 
their families and all workers thrive and not just survive. Current pre-employment assessments all use text-based tests, which we now know only appeal to 10% of our decision-making brain and therefore have low validity. They can also not assess for any trust factors or 10 key soft skills. In contrast, visual neuroscience evaluations can improve our business world by appealing to 100% of the brain in far less time with much greater accuracy. And they can measure trust and soft skills, which we now know are vital to business success. As we can see, while well, starting with why might have been groundbreaking back in 2009, it's time to embrace modern neuroscience and storytelling to step into the future and start with who. In Act 1 of any story we impart, we need to emotionally connect with our audience to raise dopamine and oxytocin to set the stage for a trusting relationship. In Act 2, we need to create instinctual concern by stimulating cortisol and norepinephrine. Finally, in Act 3, we need to calm our audience by generating serotonin and GABA so we can impart a logical conclusion and call to action. I encourage you to move beyond outdated approaches that might have served us well in the past and embrace new ways to know who we are and how to use neuroscience to know who others are so we can effectively persuade them with proper storytelling. I also encourage you to eat more cheese. Thanks.